the one and only. I'm joined here by the legend, the one and only, Quentin Rampage Jackson. Triller Fight Club presents Triad Combat, which is going down this Saturday at Global Life Park in Arlington, Texas. Tickets are still available. We'll get to that in just one minute. Triller, they're the ones behind putting on the versus battles, right? Bone Thugs and Harmony versus 3-6 Mafia. I had no idea that was, that was Triller. It is. It's originally originated by Swiss Beats and Timberlands. Right. But who you got? Bone Thugs and Harmony, 3-6 Mafia. Triller's putting that battle I'm from on. Memphis, baby. You know I got 3-6 <laughs> Mafia. You know, uh, DJ Paul is the king of Memphis. That's your boy, too. That's, that's where I'm super tight with him. No disrespect to um, Bone Thugs. You know what I'm saying? They're cool people, and I grew up listening to them as well, but hometown. Man. It was three six Mafia. Did you ever play him in the gym whenever you were working out, yeah. getting ready? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. get some yeah. of that, uh, tear the club up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was one of my favorites back in the day. <laughs> All right, man. So let's get to it, man. Triller Fight Club has Triad Combat, which is a mix of MMA, boxing, and uh, also like kind of some originals in there. Mm. What made you want to do? Um, be part of this uh, because obviously you've been part of a lot of organizations over, mm. your, over the course of your career right. but what is it about this that intrigued you, you said you know what I want to be the captain to represent MMA versus team boxing you know um, Triller they, they're doing some um, some new age stuff they, they're changing the game up uh, Shannon um, Briggs and I have been going back and forth at each other we've we've been talking about doing a boxing match and an MMA match and I just want to show the world that MMA, uh, uh, we're the real fighters. Boxers, they're, yeah, they're good at striking, they're good at stand up, they're good at boxing, but MMA fighters are the real fighters. And I think uh, Triller is the first organization stepping uh, forward that direction and that movement to put MMA and boxers against each other. And to kind of level the playing field out yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so, if everything goes good this weekend at Global Life Park in Arlington, people are clamoring for a match between you and Shannon. Obviously, you and Shannon been mouthing off at each other. The press conference got a little bit, of, you know, a little heated. Um, he's probably said, hey, champ, about, I don't know, a thousand times now. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm so sick of the guy saying that I, I want to, I want him to sign the contract. If I win, he can't say, let's go champ no more. Let's go he champ. Still, he can still sell his let's go champ gear. <laughs> he can do whatever. He just can't He just can't keep saying that shit. I'm so sick of hearing that shit. But you win, is that a match that you would want to eventually have, you versus Shannon Briggs, whether it be, you know, in triad combat, whether it be in a boxing ring, or would you want to have it in a, an MMA? I, I would love to fight him at his own game first. In the perfect world, right? And yeah. then fight him in the MMA. That in would my be dope. World. That would be dope. That's, that was my original idea. How would the fight play out? Well, I think I'd kick his ass in boxing because he'll, <laughs> un he'll underestimate me. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he don't he don't know that I've trained boxing. So he will he will underestimate me in boxing. I think that I either uh, win by a decision. You know, if I don't get a knockout, probably win by decision. And then in MMA, I just mopped the floor with him. I was just embarrassing <laughs> in MMA. Well, you talk about boxing and you talk about, you know, you've mentioned Mike Tyson was one of your favorite fighters growing up. Uh, but I would say, like, has it ever really occurred to you to say, you know what, I, want, I got the itch to get into a professional boxing ring, put on the gloves and have a traditional boxing match prior to Shannon, just in general, had it ever occurred to yeah, you? Yeah, always. You to? Back when I was fighting in the UFC, I've always wanted to to box. I've, I've asked Dana White to uh, get, help me get a boxing match years ago. I, I've asked um, Scott Coker, you know, I want to do a boxing match. I wanted to do, do a boxing match before I retired. That's my goal. So let me ask you, when you talk about the differences between MMA and boxing, right, and you mentioned, you know, um, MMA's real fighters and you feel like it's the superior combat sport. When did you get the itch to want to get into MMA, you know? Because I, heard, I read the story about you wrestling and, you know, and I've heard the stories about how you started as a wrestler. And right. Uh, well, MMA, it was like a mistake. I, I didn't know much about MMA. I was wrestling in college and I came home. You know, I got injured in college and I came home, healed up and stuff, came, went back to Memphis. And uh, uh, one of my old uh, wrestling buddies was doing um, MMA. And he took me to a fight. And I saw this guy tap somebody out. 
and, and then referees have to fight. He put his foot on the guy's face and kicked the guy off him. I thought that was very rude and unsportsmanlike and very cocky. And I don't like people like that, right? So I told so I told my friend at the time, I said, hey, man, I want to fight that guy. And he started laughing at me. He said, man, that's the champion of Memphis. He's a he's the best here. He's a purple belt of jujitsu. And, you know, I have never even done jujitsu at this point. And, um, you know, a couple weeks or so go by and, and uh, uh, I'm helping my friend train for his fight, and um, it was three days before the fight. Somebody pulled out, and, and they asked me to fight. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll fight. I don't care. It's an amateur fight. And then I was like, who's the guy? Then my friend told me, you remember the guy you saw that, that put his foot on the guy's face and, and uh, kicked him kicked him, and kicked him off? He was like, yeah. He said, it's that guy. I said, that's the champion. He said, yeah, you said you wanted to fight. <laughs> I said, all right, fuck it. Yeah, I did. And um, I went. Three days notice, fought the champion and beat him by decision. Wow! And then they was like, "Oh man, you you you're a fighter now." And then uh, maybe six months later, uh, that same guy moved to California, so I trained with Fabiano Iha. He's like a real good Brazilian black belt, and he sent for me, told me to come out there, and I went went there. You know, so it was just like something to get me back into wrestling. And then I had one more amateur fight at Fabiano's gym. And I won that, and then I, I, I went to do my professional fight. So I only had two amateurs fight, went to professional, and my first professional fight, I got my ass kicked. But I put on a good show, and the promoter loved me, and he brought me back. And that was it? That was it. And then I, I went on a winning spree, went to Japan, lost my first one, went on a winning spree, then went to the UFC, won the belt. It just, it was an accident. I just got it. I just got in. I just kept going with it. So when you see a promotion like Triller come along, right, and they want to put their hands into combat sports and kind of mix the worlds up and then add a little bit of flair to it, because obviously the one thing that we haven't really acknowledged is that Metallica happens to be, you know, perform they're going to be headlining the night at the event this Saturday, which I think is really dope because, you know, one thing about sports and, and music, they kind of go hand in hand, you know, especially with, you know, now that, you know, you see more of the pro boxers and the MMA fighters getting walked out by recording artists. So it's a, it's a fusion of these worlds that are colliding. But for you, as you see a new promotion kind of take off, how do you, like you being as experienced as you are, because you've worked with every major promoter, like, like how do you kind of perceive it? Like, is it just, you know, I know it's business obviously for you, but it's like, okay, these are the, this is someone that I want to work with. You know, this is someone that I, I want right. to take a chance on. What I, I, I noticed that they're changing the game up, and I like that. And, and they're bringing someone as big as Metallica uh, to the table. Look, you know, this girl that I'm really close with, she don't know much about fighting. You know, me and her, we're super, we're super cool, we're super close. And I, and I said, hey, um, I'm going to Dallas for um, Thanksgiving. You want to come hang out? Because I hung out with her last Thanksgiving. We went to Cancun last Thanksgiving. And she just didn't want a girly girl like anime girl. She she looked what's going on. She said, oh, I don't want to go. You're going to some fighting thing. I don't want to go. Then she was like, maybe I might go to some concerts and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. But then she texted me back. She's like, yeah, it's a Metallica show the same night. I want to go see, Me yeah, I'm going I'm to go see Metallica. I said, perfect. That's the same place where I'm going. She said, what? So that, that, that sparked like some, some interest in my ear. I, I was like, they bring it two different worlds together because some people some people are like girls and stuff like that they don't they might not be into fighting but they they might love the the metallica or the, any other um artists that they bring you know Absolutely. so so they're smart the way that they're doing it it's like an ideal date you know you have the man that wants to watch the combat sports the female that might want to watch the live show or both you know because right. a lot of times whenever you know like i'm a big you know i'm a big fan of like pro boxing and combat sports so like when a big fight happens i don't want to not watch the fight right perfect example i just happened to be at a concert on saturday and i left because i wanted to watch terrence crawford fight right so you know it's like it's yeah. you, you you're able to do both it's right. the best of both the they're, they're smart the way they're doing it they changed the game up um yeah i'm i'm really excited about seeing this event on saturday and if um if i like that thing i'm gonna try to like I'm gonna try to be over here at Triller. Like, what's up? You guys want to rampage Jackson? <laughs> Yo, cut the check, cut yeah. the check. Yeah. You know, but you know, speaking of which, obviously, you like, you, like I've said, you know, you've been part of every major promotion, you've been part of UFC. You know, you've been part of Strike Force as well, yeah. uh, and you kind of going through the motions of working with some of the promoters, and you know, you see how fighters get paid. I saw one of the guys at the press conference mention mm -hmm. 
the reason we don't go fight in MMA is because we don't want to take a pay cut. Like I, that was very, that was a slap to the face. Uh, I, the guy that said that, I guarantee you, that MMA fighters make more than him. I mean, you know, you know, and you would know more than I would know. But just you being an essentially a pioneer in the MMA world now, you know, uh, you're still young by my standards, right? Uh, do you feel that that's still a, a thing where you feel that the MMA fighters aren't paid accordingly? Listen, every fighter wants to make more money than what they're getting paid. But for, but for a boxer to say that MMA fighters don't, don't make good money, it's stupid, okay? So for instance, let's just say, just, just, let's just say I made $2 million a fight for, for my purse. And that's what we're gonna say, we're all hypothetical. But the um, commission only knows about two, 250,000. You understand? Mm -hmm. We don't gotta post our, our, like boxers you see, they post exactly what they make. MMA is not like that. Gotcha. We say we only say like we make two hundred fifty thousand for the commission to give us our check, and the promoter gives us the rest of our money later. You understand? It that could be sense. it could be anything. It could it could be one million dollars. It could be five hundred thousand dollar purse. It can be two million dollar, five million dollar purse. But the commission only knows about two hundred fifty or five hundred thousand or whatever because uh, we. It's not like the, the promoter don't want the other fighters knowing exactly what you make. And then on top of that, you get pay-per-view pay -per -view numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just do our math. Say say if I'm making $2 million a fight, plus pay-per-view, and I fight four times a year. Plus sponsorships. Plus sponsorships. But say I'm making, say I'm making, two, million, say I'm making $2 million a purse, plus pay-per-view, if the pay-per-view does 500,000 buys, it all depends on your pay-per-view deal, a million buys, that's another like 10, five, 10 million dollars or whatever, four times a year. You understand? So, so they don't know what we make. Yeah. And some MMA fighters, we don't go around bragging like a lot of boxers and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see as many MMA fighters that are as flashy as pro boxers. Right. Well, look, you know, the name of the show is called Not The Beats Experience. And before we wrap up here, I kind of want to ask you, from your time of being, you know, in the sport, you being, you've accomplished so much, not only as an, as a fighter, as an athlete, as an ambassador, as, an, as a personality, as an actor as well. What is the best piece of advice you would give to somebody, whether they're an upcoming athlete or just someone in general, based off of your experience? Well, my best advice I could give somebody coming up is just believe in yourself it don't it don't matter what other people say you know what I'm saying believe in yourself don't don't think that the world owe you any favors work hard for what you want for what you believe in and surround yourself around positive people and if, if people around you doing like fucked up shit drugs even um, even like uh, performance drugs party drugs, whatever, stay away from around them because as the more popular you're gonna get, you're gonna get a lot of fake friends. Those 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 friends think that you think they're your friends but they secretly be hating on you. You know what I'm saying? Be careful who, who your manager is. Just just focus on you and, and focus on your career because if you in this career is it's not gonna is it's not always like a long career. Like you may say, like it's it's boring to just stay focused and stay in stay in the gym and stuff like that. No, it's not it's not boring because you know what I'm saying after your fights and stuff, you can enjoy yourself for like a week or so, but you gotta get back on it. But but fuck what other, everybody's talking about. Believe in yourself. Keep your circle real small around good, positive people, and that's 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 the that's the best advice I can give you because sometimes you get shady people around you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that right there is. Quentin Rampage Jackson, this Saturday it is going down. 
Triller Fight Club presents Triad Combat at Global Life Park in Arlington, Texas. Make sure to get your tickets now. Metallica will be headlining the night. It's gonna be a hell of a show. If you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, or anywhere in the surrounding cities, make sure to be there. And if you're not, make sure to order it on pay-per-view. I look forward to the future. Look forward to seeing you shut up Shannon Briggs, God willing, right? God willing. You know, hopefully uh, you can get him to stop saying uh, his favorite catch line, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to say it. I'm so tired of hearing this shit. <laughs> you already know. Let's go, champ. We you out. shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, we out of here.